Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. I'm going to do an intro and then go into my monologue, my nightly monologue, my blathering, whatever you want to call it. Where is my sleeping bag? So I'm going to do an introduction, a little bit of background. Um, if you're new to this channel, if it's the first time you've been on, please go to my channel and look at the playlist. There's a video that gives a best synopsis of where I'm coming from and what this channel is about, and that is called Ozark Refuge. There is a safe place. Might be might be Ozark Plateau Refugium. There is a safe place. Just look for Ozark Plateau. There is a safe place. Okay, look at that. Watch that video. It's 11 minutes and 15 seconds. It's an interview done by Pastor Joe Fox of Pastor Joe Fox in Arkansas of uh, Viking Preparedness and High Prairie Acres in Kansas, but his operation in Arkansas is called um, Shofar Mountain. It's a little community. It's his 160 acres that he bought when he was in the military, and he and his wife run it. And basically, Joe owns it, and you do what he says. You know, he's, he's the owner, and that's not a problem. So he spent his life accumulating it and developing it, so his life and money. So you, if you go there, you know, you're... You're playing by his rules, which says you're playing by biblical law. Same where, where you go anywhere in the Ozark Plateau, you better be willing to play by God's law because that's what you're going to be running under, working under, living under. Now, different people have different interpretations of it, yes, and they can get in arguments about this and that and the other thing, but r roughly that's what you're looking at doing. You come here, you better be willing to live under God's law. And I've warned people about that. So I have. People that come here and then they, they want to do their own thing and they want to live the way they've always lived and, you know, they want to have wild sex the way they've always had wild sex and do drugs and stuff. Well, that don't cut it here. I'm sorry. You might have a very short stay because the person that owns the property does not appreciate behavior like that. So, not against wild sex, just the fact that you don't do it, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, at random or, you know, there, there's rules. Like I said, I've got a message someday I'm going to do on the, the wild women of the Bible. You know, Herbert Locker had a whole series of books, All the Men of the Bible, All the Women of the Bible. My my one would be All the Wild Women of the Bible. Bible. All, actually, All the Wild Women in the Messianic Lineage. Because there's four of them. Four wild women in the Messianic Lineage that were seductresses. Okay, moving right along. There's nothing. God has nothing against hot women. So if you're a wild woman, he doesn't have anything against you. You know? Jesus sought out the woman at the well for good reason, because he knew that she would listen to him. People that are down and down and out, and that's what the whole thing, that's why I titled this again tonight, having to do around David and the cave of Adullam. Adullam, whatever, however you, however you pronounce that word. Um, it was a fortress. Come to the fortress, you know. I'm saying this is a fortress. Well, I just, in studying this for this topic, I discovered in Wikipedia or whatever, that it, an article I read that said that Adullam in the Hebrew actually indicates that it was a fortress. It wasn't just a cave, a hole in the wall. It was a fortified where you couldn't get to it very easily. So, um, if you're discontented, if you're if you're distressed, and I talked to two people tonight already that are, are distressed, and one in particular, I want people to pray for her, Jack Green, Jacqueline. Her father named her Little Jack. He wanted a boy. She They had a girl, so I called her Little Jack. And she's been through a lot of hell in her life. And she's going through some hell right now. And I'm just praying for someone to go help her. She's over near Potosi, Missouri. Festus is the nearest town. Festus, Missouri. And it's not too far from the Mississippi River. It's inside the Ozark Plateau, but it's in one of the worst areas of the world. I knew a military man over there. I've said this before, but he, he went all over the world on military operations, giving gun support for special forces groups being extracted ankle deep in brass casings from the machine guns he was firing and he said the most evil place he's ever been in the world in his entire life is over there by Festus, Missouri he was near Farmington same thing I think he died over there I think somebody killed him because I lost track with him he was going to come here and help me but he, he I don't know he, I don't think, his name was Gabriel so pray for Gabriel but pray, pray right now for Jacqueline okay Jacqueline Little Jack, um, 71 years old. She's been trying to repair the roof on her camper. 
and she's got plywood up there. She got some of it done, some of it insulated, some of it sealed, and then she had built her, she had personally built a shelter over it of um, trusses, you know, like carport trusses and tarp material, and the snow crushed it. It filled it up and crushed it, and now it's flattened down to the camper, so she can't, she can, she can, now she cannot get up on the camper to fix it, you know. So she said she just about jumped in the lake today, literally, just to go on to the next existence. But I, I'm, I'm trying to talk her into just staying around. I want to meet her, I want to, you know, hold her and hug her, you know, for a while. So please pray for her. She's in very just dire straits. And if, if someone could please go help her or, you know, figure out how to get her any kind of help at all, financially even, that would be really wonderful because she's, the methods and the Satanists there, they put water in her kerosene, run the wick on her, on her heater, and, um, they put gasoline in her kerosene one time. Just evil, evil, demonic people over there. Just... Anyway, please be praying for her. And try... We need to try to figure out a way to get her out of their extractor. Hopefully with her belongings. But, you know, I think at this time she'd be ahead to just walk away from everything and just start over. She's got some good things in storage somewhere. You know, with the stove and whatnot. <clears throat> My back's getting cold. Oh. Close the window with help. <laughs> Thought I heard a motor start up and I was like, no way. Bill's gone out so many times I go pull somebody out and help him. It's just getting him, wearing him out. Especially when it's a stupid, stupid person in a stupid place where they didn't been. There's four law, four rules of stupid. Don't go to stupid places where there's stupid people at stupid times doing stupid things. You know, you don't go at a Seven Eleven store right out right near to a bar at three o'clock in the morning because the, the bar's just let out and there's all kinds of stupid people around. Don't go there. Don't go where people are dealing drugs. You know, that's been stupid stuff. Don't break the four laws of stupid. You can break one or two of them, maybe get away with it, but you break all four of them, and you might pay for it with your life. coffee that's for sure okay so yeah I got seven people on <laughs> start at the top here okay okay we're back to the thing of pronouns and versus nouns <clears throat> Where is this in Missouri? Okay, where am I in Missouri? I am in Cedar County, Missouri. This is over, I don't know what county it is. If you're talking about, if you're into Jackie, she's over near, I said it already, Festus, so that's all I can tell you. I can't give you a pinpoint or a pin or anything on a map. And It's Me says, I think that's why people that live in the backwoods of Missouri tell you what county they live in when they meet you. Evidently significant. Yeah, it would be. Don't don't buy or go don't go to Ozark County. It's a catch and release county. You know, don't go to Green County because it's a Nazi county. That's one of the that's where Springfield is. Don't go you know, don't don't be near a big town. Springfield is the only large town in the Ozarks. It's the biggest town in the Ozarks, inside the Ozark Plateau. There's the Ozark Plateau is bordered, bounded by on the I'm gonna name the cities on the corners of it. If you draw a uh, connect the dots line to line to line you'll basically scribe out a pretty large diamond and then you'll see a pyramid the spring hill is the tip of peak of the pyramid st louis to kansas city to tulsa oklahoma to little rock arkansas that's those are cities at the outside corners of, of the ozark i got hiccups again darn it i'll have to turn them off here in a minute as it keeps going so anyway there you go Oh, 
I guess <clears throat> record a monologue. Last night I was on for three hours. That was crazy. A little bit, a little bit long. I'm going to cover my head too because it's getting chilly. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. I pray for people that are out there that are where in situations where they would rather not be in. And I just want to speak benediction over them. A good speaking, a good benediction is a good speaking. Um, and pray for them. And I actually pray, you know, before I come on, I, I'm praying that someone tonight will be led to check in you know angels will send them a little we call it a feed on their you know, side side route bar in their youtube channel or something and that they can tune in and hear what they need to hear tonight and so i want to pray for that to happen angel messengers in the name of yeshua will go out and touch people and nudge them and have them sit down and listen if they need to hear something and just mm, something that they may hear will save their lives or be, bless them to send them in the right direction. So, hallelujah. Seven on six. Okay. I just want to, I'll probably just do my opening monologue as I say it, call it. <laughs> yes. I got my band light as a ambient light. So please be praying for Jacqueline. Like I said, over by Festus, Missouri. Very, very desperate straits. And Ed and Jen, Ed and Jen have been on here recently. They were on last night. If you get on here, Ed and Jen, and hear this, another friend who's been on also is down there near you, about half an hour away, I think he said. He's in. I can't remember the name of it. Sorry, I forgot. I know you're in Seabrook. He's like Hamilton or something like that, Avila. I don't know what it was. He's, I think he said about half an hour from where you're at, and and I said, he's going to be there for about a month. And if you if you want a convoy, he's convalescing from a couple of surgeries. So, but he's a neat guy, really good guy. I, I know him only from phone calls, text, and email, and YouTube. But he's, he's I think he's a stand-up guy. And I suggested, you know, convoy. And he goes, that'd be great. You know, it's safer for everybody. You know, better if some, there's a problem, somebody else is there to help. Especially a couple extra hands or an extra radio. I will always recommend get Baofeng radios, these little... They're a little part of the two meter band. There's two different parts of the two meter band. These are the upper part, like 430 to 470 kilohertz. But in an emergency, they're good. They're little. They basically serve as a walkie-talkie. A more expensive Baofeng or the Ushan walks on radio, Chinese radios. Any any UHUVF radio, you have to you have to understand how to program it. And this one, you don't have to program it. You just turn it on. Okay, I'll demonstrate that. Before. I'm going to demonstrate it now. Sixteen. There's sixteen channels. So. Fourteen, eight, three, one. One through sixteen. Two, thirteen, sixteen. So you turn it on. It's on. You turn it off. It's Power off. On. You push the button. You can talk to somebody. Okay. 
for a convoy, they're great because you can talk vehicle to vehicle without dialing your cell phone, fiddling around and dropping your cell phone and getting in an accident because you dropped your cell phone, which happens a lot on the road. Believe me, it happens more often than anybody would care to admit. These come with little chargers, little 110 chargers, little cheap chargers, but they work. So simple, they work. Get some of them. I got 13 of those on eBay for 99 bucks with 18 chargers and all the antennas. I got an extra antenna and a whole bunch of headsets, little ear headsets. So, Ed and Jen, if you tune in, Ray, Sova, who's on, been on almost every night. You guys have been on almost every night. You're both in the same within half an hour of each other right now. And Ray's going to be leaving to come back up to his property in Missouri in three, two, one, no, in about a month. So it'll be a good time. You can see his property. If you want to come up and visit me, you can come up and visit me. But it'd be a good tour. He could give you an introduction to the area where he's at and give you the lay of the land. And if he knows, he may know some property for sale. He may, may be able to locate near him or work something out with him. And I don't know how much stuff you guys got. I don't know what you're planning on doing. I don't have any idea. But maybe that you can help each other. Okay. So it'd be a good, good, good thing to do. Okay. I'm going to see if anybody else is on there. And I, I may just close my eyes and go into a the old quintessential opening monologue. <laughs> Buzzing 23. I'm ready. Ready for what? I pray everyone is healthy and doing better each day. We're getting healthier, wealthier, younger, and wise. Younger, healthier, wealthier, and wiser. Yep. It's me. I think that's why people that live in the backwoods of Missouri tell you what county they live in when they meet you. I don't know. I, I usually don't. But, you know. I'm ready for what? Huh. Buzzing 23, what, uh, where you at? You ready for to help people move? You ready to move? Or what are you ready for? Ready to get out of this miserable world? Are you ready to come to the cave of Adullam? Come to Goshen? Zion? Whatever you want to call it. The fortress? I like, I like, I, I'm glad finding out that Adullam was a fortress because that's exactly what I've been describing the Ozark Plateau as for 20 years. It's a fortress, a gigantic fortress, perfectly designed at creation for this point in time. Complete with a 1,000-mile moat around it and having everything needed inside. Food, water for multiple levels, multiple sources. Uh, material for shelter, for homes, for building, and for growing food. And it's lacking one thing. I went into that the other night and nobody ever answered, so... There's six things you need to have a fortress. What is a sixth one? <coughs> I'll go ahead and answer it tonight if nobody answers it ready very soon. Ready to learn? I don't know. He, he said, I'm ready, but I don't know what ready to what. <laughs> so. Excuse me, I'm going to try to get some hot water. If I had any water to heat up, I could do it. Inch, 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 come on. Clickety, 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 click. Okay. I've been reading so much, studying so much on um, food production, mushrooms, they're a good protein source, also very healing, microgreens, you know, there's better ways of growing food than the conventional stick a seed in the ground and wait for it to come up, you know, we need to get beyond that mentality, grow bamboo for shelter and housing and food, and uh, there's so many things we could be doing, it doesn't take much to do it work and what did I put in this plant protein chocolate so it don't taste like that at all oh well mm.
Bayou Prepper. This is plural. South Texas. Okay, Ray Sober's down in South Texas right now. Are you planning on moving at all? Are you staying there or what's up? Bayou Preppers. I'm trying to get in touch with Ed and Jen. Hopefully they'll tune in tonight. They are in Houston, Texas. Seabrook, I think they said. So, you know, to hook them up with Ray Sova and anybody else and get to get a convoy going, you know. That's going to happen someday. There will be entire convoys of people relocating. I mean, complete with semis, tractor trailers, and convoys of tractor trailers. Do not spill this on me because it's hot. It's boiling hot. Don't spill it. Oh, how much is in there? Not much. That's okay. I'll take it all. It dump it all in. Oh, that's too much. That's going to be hot. That's okay. That's what I wanted hot. Come on. Where you at? Where you at? That's not on. Worry about it later. Okay. So. Convoys. One time, this is back about 1994, I believe, there was a speaker at one of the Patriot meetings, a young man. And his story was that he was, he, he worked for the NSA. National Security Agency, just like uh, Edward Snowden did, does, did. And he um, he said several interesting things, and I'm very memorable. One of them was that he said, whatever is the most futuristic thing that you can possibly think of, the NSA is always 15 years ahead of that. Okay, DARPA too, same thing. And I'll give you an example. is the SR-71 Blackbird, you know, that high reconnaissance, super fast plane. We heard that about that, I think about Reagan era, you know, 1967 or something. They started building that in 1949. You're talking a couple of years after World War II, they were building a high altitude, very fast, high reconnaissance, you know, high speed, high altitude, high reconnaissance plane. So they're always many, many years ahead of what you think they're at. Now, one of the things he made sense too, another thing he said was that, this was his story. He was there's a whole group of young people that went AWOL, that, that left the NSA together as a pact, as a group. And to protect our lives, he was the public speaker, but the others were all hidden. They were all over the world in hiding, like Edward Snowden. They didn't even, they didn't even make a peep like Edward, Edward Snowden did. They just kept silent, but they holding a lot of information that they could divulge if this, if anything happened to this their speaker, their spokesperson, this kid. I don't remember his name. I don't remember that he gave his name. But anyway, so that's another thing he said, his part of his story. But the third thing he said was very interesting. He said, if you if you want if you need to move, if you want to relocate and you don't and you don't have the ability or the money, he said, just wait and watch. He said the day will come when there will be entire convoys of people moving and relocating, especially off the east coast, west coast, you know, there'll be convoys of people. And I'm saying semi loads, semi tractor trailer flatbeds tankers, um, you know, vans, you know, the vans are the big boxes, the 53-footers. There'll be convoys of truckers and everybody moving. They'll be working together to help people move. You run across a town that's empty because of a plague or something, a pandemic, they'll empty it. They'll take everything. They'll load it all up. Every battery, every canned food, every gallon of gasoline, every gallon of kerosene, every gallon of diesel fuel, they'll take everything. Everything that's not bolted down, they'll take it. They might disassemble buildings and bring them on flatbeds. <coughs> Chicken coops, greenhouses, the whole nine yards. So th imagine that. Be picture that in your head because that will, can, will happen. can happen and it will happen. And they'll bring them here to the Ozark Plateau where you can make use of them. So in safety and blessing and ha happiness. So that's my vision. <laughs> like it or not. Like it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Victoria, Texas. I don't know. I thought so. I'm not sure on all these areas. Oh, now what happened? I just I accidentally clicked off. Accidental. So my voice is already scratchy, so I'm not going to talk very long. 
Last night I couldn't believe it was on for three hours. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Um, <clears throat> need to develop a board, like a little bulletin board thing, a connection to hook people up that want to relocate. How can we do that? I don't know. Somebody tell me. All right, so you go to Facebook, you know, the uh, my Ozark Plateau Refugium, Refugium Association, or something like that. Oprah, Ozark Plateau, Remnant, Refugee, Relocation, <laughs> Headquarters, Association, Association Headquarters, Oprah, O-P-R-R-R-A-H, Oprah. It's easy to remember. Okay, so maybe I'll just can this one tonight. Anybody want to ask any questions? Ed and Jen, where are you at? You're supposed to be AWOL tonight. Come on. Tune in. Race, where are you supposed to be in tonight again tonight, too? Jacqueline, I don't think is going to be able to get in. She's got a bad problems with her phone because of the 5G. It blew her phone up. She can't even receive. She can sometimes receive calls. Can only make calls. Can't text. It's really a pain in the butt. Oh, Mark Narvison. Hi, Mark. How you doing tonight? Hope everyone is healthy and doing better each day. Uh, oh, um, my voice is a little scratchy. I went out to try to get the fire going. Let me give a quick update. I did a video earlier just because I was trying to live stream from the Airstream. Live stream from the Airstream. <laughs> Airstream live stream. <laughs> but um, I had started the stove up yesterday. Got it going really good. Crammed it full of wood. And figured it would last through the night. Well, it probably did, but I didn't. I looked over this morning, and it wasn't, wasn't daylight, and there wasn't any smoke. And in fact, late last night, I didn't really see any, but I couldn't quite tell because the flashlight didn't reach over there. But um, so I went over today. I finally got over there probably about 5 o'clock, way too late. And it was it was out pretty much. There were a few coals, but I wasn't going to try to resuscitate it and build it up because it would take a lot of time. So I just blew it off. I'll go over in no time and do it. It's kind of going to be my man cave, my hangout, you know, camp out. I can go over there to camp out, you know, clean up, do stuff, you know, put put around in there and try to make it a little bit more livable, little by little. Little by little, make it livable in case I have a visitor, you know, that can have a place to stay. I've got a couple of guys that want to get here. Uh, Rock, be playing for Rock from Cali Colorado, California. Uh, Rock in Colorado wants to get out here. And Dave from Texas wants to get in here. And both of them will be a big help just because it'll be so much fun having somebody around that, you know, I'm not. Totally, it doesn't hate me yet. Yet, uh, whatever. Um, so, yeah, be praying for them. Both of them have difficulties. Everybody that I know is distressed, uh, um, in debt, and what's the other one? Discontented. Yeah, we're all discontented and distressed because we want to have done with this world order and move on to the next one. We want to be under new management. Like that article I read last night said, you know, <clears throat> we would like to be under new management, under the management of our king, our captain, our brother, our captain, our king, Messiah, Yeshua. So, just pray for everybody that's out there that has is in difficulties and dire straits and in having hard times. Please pray for Jacqueline. I mean, oh my gosh. Sophia, for I wish so, so much that I could do something for her, but I, I don't have a vehicle. I don't have capable of getting there, and I don't have the money to do it. But and if there's any way somebody can pitch in a little bit or help her, get down there and help her, that would be wonderful. <clears throat> Maybe Ed Jen and Ray on their way up from Texas could stop in and say hi. So, all right. I'm going to about bag it here. I'm tired, and my voice is not up to this certainly not as much as it was last night I don't know I can't believe I did that no more comments anybody else want to comment I'm going to say hi good night everybody
It's me. It's me. I'm in Cedar County. It's me. I'm in Cedar County. About an hour drive north of Springfield. I say hour drive because I'm not an hour north. I'm an hour drive. You got to go up to Humansville, which is about 45 minutes. And then it's 15 minutes from Humansville over to where I'm at. Find Stockton. I'm about 20 minutes north of Stockton. Hapker Mills. I could walk there if I felt like walking that far. And I don't. But it's about five miles, maybe three to five miles from where I'm at. I'll check it out someday. On it. By the, as the crow flies, I don't know. But the crow don't fly, you know, you gotta walk. So, oh well. Okay. I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. It's me. Good night, it's me. Good night, Mark. Good night, Buzzin23. I didn't hear anything back there. I'm ready for what? You ready for what? Got any out and ready to learn? I don't know, I guess not. Bayou Preppers, hello from South Texas. Hi, Ray Sova there and Ed and Jenner down there. So, where is South Texas? Where you at? And it's me, says I have family in Victoria Bayou, Pre Victoria Bayou Preppers. So, where's Victoria, Texas? I assume you're talking about. Hi, doing pretty good. Good, Mark. Thank you. God bless you. Leslie Cook, how you doing? Hello from Northeast North Carolina. The bad times have only just begun. <laughs> The good times has only just begun. Why is there a wrench by my name? Do you know? Um, I think it's because of your setup as a moderator, and I have no idea how that happened. Um, good night. Good night. Uh, Tony, good night. Deborah Ozark, hello. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, good Shabbat to you, Deborah. Good to hear from you. Mark Norbert, good night. You got the aunt and lovely cook because you're special. Yeah, you're special, Deborah. I think the wrench is a moderator. I don't know how that happens. To receive the message, yeah. To receive the wrench message. Uh, that's all I know. I think it means you're a moderator. How it happened, I have no idea. Maybe you're a moderator on another one. It gave you a moderator ship on this one. I don't know. Play around with it. Leslie, play around with that and let us know if you can figure it out. Somebody else has to, or somebody else look on YouTube and try to figure it out for us. Um... You don't want to have, a, if you get a very big group, then you have people coming in that are trolls and, you know, shills and stuff, and they just kind of mess things up, and they, they can be bots, too. They don't necessarily be human, you know. You just be a little irritating demon, a gremlin in the works, as it were. So if we see that happening, we'll have to put it into it somehow. We'll have to have Leslie moderate him. <laughs> I don't know. There's not one by my by me. Uh, see, how come I can't get on here? Why can't I write something on here? I don't get that. Let me give my email. I'll do it. I'll say it out, and then I'll do it the uh, phonetically, the code word one. It's diamonds with no vowels. Pretend you're doing Hebrew. So say diamonds, plural, like a diamonds, a whole bunch of diamonds, like me and my family diamonds. Take out the vowels. So it's D M N D S 2001 when I went online at yahoo.com. Okay. Delta Mike. November Delta Sierra 2001 at yahoo.com. That's my email address. My phone number is 417-988-0333. 333 dozen next Yozar Plateau. 120 degrees radius. Uh, angle of whatever. 120 degrees is one third of 360. It's one third of a hole. 333 is one third of a hole. Same thing as 120 degrees. What's outside of 333-666? Judgment. So the Ozark Plateau is a two facing 120 degree angles of safety of island. Green island of survival. Look at it on a map on Google Earth. You'll see it's a bright diamond. Well, on Weather Channel sometimes it's, it's just a brilliant green perfect diamond. You can measure it 120 degrees. I did it with a quick angle which is a construction tool. So... That's about it. I'm my, my voice is about gone. I got chilled about too much today. And if somebody had got on and said I was like they could see my breath, I got to watch the video I did a little earlier from the airstream. But I was just that, that's not my living quarters. So I, I appreciate your concern, but I'm not in there and I'm not cold. I, I have like two electric heaters over here and I'm doing fine. So I got a uh, infrared heating pad that I lay on when I'm sleeping so it's supposed to be healing and i'm hoping it's healing me or doing something for my internal organs 
So anyway, that's that's it. So I'm I'm okay. I'm fine. That's just my toy, my man cave, my hangout, my campsite. And if I, I'll probably get it going tomorrow. N next night, day when I feel like doing, it, I'll, I'll get the fire started and I'll. I want to film it. I want to do a top lit updraft. It's very hard to do because there's not much top in there. It's a very narrow. It's a very low box firebox. It's 18 inches wide, but only 13 inches deep. And 28 inches long, so it's very long. It's very good for holding fires and starting fires in it, but it sure as heck ain't good for doing a top lit updraft because top lit updraft means you got to have a top lit. So I'm gonna I'm bit brainstorming around that in my head. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to manage it. Slide in a big piece of cardboard in there with fluff under, or maybe you tape it and just slide it in there, tape it together so it'll burn. The idea of the top lit updraft is you get the fire going and it lights up. You know, it heats up the stack, and once that, that is burns down, then it trickles down. You know, it melts down and trickles down onto the fire below it. So I'm going to look at another way to do it than what I did. Because it, did, it worked It worked okay. It, it started, it looked good, it stayed good. But I wasn't terribly impressed with it. So I'm going to do a better job of it next time. I'm going to apply my scientific mind to how to do it in that stove and do a really good job of it. So, all right. Completely with airflow and everything else, so. All right, that's about it. <clears throat> I think it's a good night, everybody, so I'm going to call it quits. See you next time, Leslie. Yep. You must have control of motors. I have no idea how, though. If you can figure it out, let me know. But I do not know. I know when I was on um, an interview with Mud Flood is Armageddon, Alan, whatever his name is, um, they talked about, you know, people were talking about making moderators. I can I write somebody and find out and figure it out, but I don't know. But the wrench means you're a moderator for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know how to do anything on here, so I'm just, I'm lucky to get on here and do anything, people, so. I are a technotard, okay, so forgive me. If I wasn't so stupid, I could help people more. But I'm pretty dumb when it comes to computers and stuff, so. I'm lucky to get on here at all. I need to get on stream here, I'd like to be able to screen share and do a lot more, I could do a lot more powerful stuff. If I could, you know, share what's in my head with y'all better. That's why I wouldn't have to be holding my phone, you know, and blah, you know looking at the screen on the tablet i should be able to just stream share screen share and other things you do i wish i knew how to do it i could do a whole lot better job writing and stuff so all right well good night everybody love you all be blessed be protected be guided be kept be held this is what it's like to be held no nowhere else i don't know no, no. See you next time, everybody. All right, good night. Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta lasagna.